After their three one-point meetings in the regular season, the Warriors, they're two and a half point favorites on the road tonight in Sacramento. That's according to ESPN Bet. So let the games begin because they literally could not be any closer right between these two NorCal rivals. So Perk, when you're looking at all of this, what do you think is going to be the deciding factor in tonight's win or go home game? You know what? I'm looking at a matchup, and I'm looking at De'Aaron Fox. Without Malik Monk and Kevin Herter, Malik Austin, he's going to have to be outstanding to get past Golden State. But I'm looking at a wing player, a guy that when the Warriors won the championship, some would say was the second best player on the floor, and Andrew Wiggins. And when I look at Andrew Wiggins, and I'm looking at the size, okay, you're looking at 6'7". Uh, Andrew Wiggins is. You're looking at De'Aaron Fox being 6'3". Look at these clips right here. Andrew Wiggins staying connected, using his size, his athleticism to stay in front of Fox. Fox is really trying to get in his bag on his play. He cut him off on the baseline. Look at the contest of the jump shot. That's the contest that's saying, I'm going to make you miss and not hope you miss. Here go another clip right here. Again, Andrew Wiggins, 6'7". De'Aaron Fox, 6'3". Okay. Using his size, his athleticism, giving them space. Taking up the space, staying on his feet, staying down. The length is barred in De'Aaron Fox, which forced a turnover right there. So I'm looking at this matchup tonight, and we know De'Aaron Fox have to be special. 37% field goal percentage the last two seasons. That's what Andrew Wiggins is holding De'Aaron Fox to when he's guarding him or the closest defender. This is something to keep an eye on. Yeah, Perk, I, I love your pick. I, I think Wiggins is crucial in tonight's game. Mm. Uh, when you look at Monk being out and Herter being out, yep. the spacing for the Kings is not going to be there. That, 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 that floor is going to shrink. Play-in is an extension of the playoffs, so we're going to get a little bit of that playoff basketball tonight. They're going to let a little bit more physical play happen. The game might slow down a little bit. Uh, you want the Kings to play at a good pace. I, I think people really underestimate. I mean, Malika, when you went through those clips there, you saw – crunch time. Malik Monk made a lot of those shots. He, yeah. a, he mm -hmm. made, it takes big shots for the Kings and as someone who probably was a favorite for six minutes of the year still might win it obviously. Uh, Nas Reed, a couple other candidates are in that mix but he is vital for their team and Herter provides spacing. With those guys out you're going to need Mitchell and some of these other guys who you aren't really I, I would say we don't classify them as traditional three-point shooters, yeah. that space is going to be tight. Wiggins is going to have an opportunity to really be aggressive and be a defender knowing that he's going to have help behind us because he can. Yeah, one um, of It's going to be a tough game for the Kings, right? and I don't think they can win without those two guys. It's I really don't. Going forward, we're covering the Golden State Warriors. Kendra Andrews. Kendra, we know the stakes are high for Golden State tonight. What's their mindset heading in? Yeah, Malika, the Warriors just wrapped up shoot around a little bit ago, and everyone seems to be in a, in a good space. Stephen Curry went through his full shooting routine. He's looking and feeling good. And they're approaching tonight as if it's another Game 7. And Steph the other day said it's actually ironic that the play-in game is against the Kings because, Malika, we all remember that epic seven-game series from just about a year ago between these two teams in the same exact building. Steph said we got the job done then, and we just have to repeat it now. We still believe that we can beat anybody on any given night. It just comes down to execution and getting the job done. They're looking to do that and then, as Steph said, just win one game, then one more game, and then hopefully make it into a competitive playoff series. That's all they need. They just need a crack. They just need a slight edge to be able to go in and take advantage. Thank you. You could say that they're in a, a golden state of mind heading into this one. Kendra, I appreciate it. Let's take a look, though, at Bobby Mark's offseason outlook on the dubs. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. But Clay Thompson, he will be an unrestricted free agent. The Warriors, they have to decide what to do with Chris Paul's almost $31 million non-guaranteed contract. They won't have a first rounder, a first round pick, unless it moves up to the top four, which is unlikely. So, Perk, there's a lot of questions. There's more questions than there are answers. I am firmly a member of the don't pour dirt on the dynasty. I'd rather be late to the party club that Brian Windhorst started. But you've been adamant in saying that this dynasty has been over. Do you think the Warriors will advance to the playoffs? And if they don't, what does the fallout look like in your mind? I don't think they're going to get to the postseason because even if the Pelicans or the Lakers lose tonight, I got the Warriors losing to them because I got the Warriors beating the Sacramento Kings. But, I mean, every good thing comes to an end. And I understand, you know, a lot of people don't want to throw dirt on the dynasty, but they've been buried for a while now, for the last, what, year and a half, going on two years now. And it's okay. And I'm thinking the first piece is going to be Klay Thompson. I was the one that was real high on Klay being traded. I'm still on that. 
um, because I feel like he has a lot left in the tank. I feel like a change of scenery would do wonders for Klay Thompson. And I also feel like somebody's gonna offer him a bigger bag than what the Golden State Warriors are gonna offer him this offseason. Just my opinion. Austin? Yeah, I, I, I agree with Perk uh, to multiple things. First, let's start with, I do believe that they'll beat the Sacramento Kings. Okay. Um, especially without, like we mentioned earlier, no Herder, no Monk. I see the Warriors getting that win. But I do not see them beating, whether it's the Lakers or Pelicans, I don't see them winning twice in a row and getting to the postseason, which then asks, you know, the major question, uh, do they rebuild? Do they go in a different direction? In my eyes, as long as Steph Curry is there, they're going to continue to try to build around him as he has these primal years. You can't trade him without having your house burned down or your block lit up. So that's just what it's going to be. So as long as Steph's going to be there, you got to build around him in his last prime years. Uh, Clay will get a bag to go somewhere else, though. And if they don't even get into the playoffs this year, I would I would look to probably move off of him and go in a different direction. I but agree it all her. starts with the play-in tournament tonight.